Good morning. It is a real joy to be with you this morning and to be able to share God's word. Uh, permit me to say a couple of things. First of all, it's great to be with you guys who are under 60 years old. I am a retired high school teacher as well as being a retired pastor. In fact, I just went back this spring to do a short stint at Vanguard High School up in Ocala. So it's really good. You, you give me life and, and you motivate me this morning by your presence, those of you who are younger. Secondly, let me say that 13 months ago, my wife Judy and I joined your church and we could not be happier that we're here. I don't know if any of you are looking for a church, but it's been our experience that this is a church where you can come in and you can find your own place and people will let you use your talents and your gifts as you feel free to use them. So let me just say that good word. And I, our staff here is so good and the fact that I, as just a worshiping congregate, member of the congregation, would be asked to preach this morning, I guess, is a testimony to their wisdom, isn't it? <laughs> okay, uh, let me just read the scripture with you to you this morning from Exodus chapter 4. God has asked Moses to go and lead his people out of Egypt. And Moses gives a response which is very common, very, you can, we can all put ourselves in Moses' shoes. Listen to what he says. Moses said to the Lord, O oh Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, who gave you his mouth? Who makes him deaf or mute? Who gives him sight or makes him blind? Is it I, not I, the Lord? Now go, and I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. But Moses said, O oh Lord, please send someone else to do it. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses, and he said, What about your brother Aaron the Levite? I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you, and his heart will be glad when he sees you. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. I will help you both to speak and will teach you what to say. Can we just ask God to speak to us all this morning? Lord, we're so grateful that you are right here in this very place this morning. We thank you for already the celebration of joy with the children from Vacation Bible School. And you've taught us that unless we all become as a little child, we will not enter your kingdom. So Lord, we ask you to come and just be with us this morning. You know who we are, you know our needs, and you know we want to love you. Come Lord. Come Holy Spirit, amen. Y'all know who Josh Hamilton is? The all-star outfielder and the reigning all-American most valuable player in the American League. Josh Hamilton says in the current issue of Christianity Today, I am amazed that God can use somebody as flawed as me. You see, Josh has been fighting a very public battle with drugs and alcohol since 2002. In fact, alcohol and drugs almost destroyed Josh's life as well as his marriage and his baseball career. But in 2005, Josh opened his scripture and one day found these words in the book of James. Humble yourself before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. When Josh read those words, he went cold turkey off of drugs and alcohol. 
All was not easy. He had a struggle. He had to be reconciled with Kate, his estranged wife. And he had to resume his career. After much counseling, though Josh began to make steps and his counselor said to him, Josh, you blessed, you've got a great talent, go ahead and play baseball. And so in the last three years, Josh Hamilton has become a superstar. In February, 2011, this February, he signed a contract, a two-year contract for $24 million. But all the scars from Josh's life is not gone. He can only carry a small amount of money in his pocket because still he's tempted to buy alcohol or drugs if he has a lot of cash. He has a support team consisting of three teammates and his wife, Kate. And when he's away from the ballpark, one of them has to be with him at all times. Josh says, I'll never be normal but I'm okay with that. Now the message I have for you this morning is that Josh is a contemporary example of a timeless divine truth. And that is that God is at work in human history and God does his work in this world through ordinary, imperfect people like all of us, like me, like you, like every member of this church, like every people, every person in the whole world. Few men and women in the Bible that God used would have been voted by their high school graduating class as the most likely to succeed. You remember Joseph? When I was in vacation Bible school, I remember the Joseph, the kid who had a coat of many colors. Well, Joseph was an obnoxious young brat that his brothers resented. In fact, they sold him into slavery in Egypt. You remember David? David was the youngest son of Jesse, a little baby-faced guy who was out in the pasture field tending the sheep. And one day the old prophet Samuel came looking for a new king for Israel. And not even Jesse, David's father, thought of him as a likely candidate to be the king that the prophet Samuel had come to find. Other people, John the Baptist, an eccentric loner who lived out in the desert. He ate locusts and wild honey and he had such poor diplomatic skills that when he began to talk about the immorality of the of the ruling elite of his time, he lost his head. Mary Magdalene, the converted prostitute, sometimes embarrassed the the disciples because of what they considered her inappropriate displays of affection toward Jesus. Jesus himself was regarded by the religious elite of his day as an untrained rabbi, a country bumpkin from Nazareth who loved to party too much. And even St. Paul himself was a self-righteous hater of Christians before he was converted. And after he was converted, he had such a terrible physical ailment that he described it as a thorn in the flesh that he prayed and prayed to God about, but God never removed it. Paul was imperfect. But God used him in the mightiest way of anybody in Christian history since Jesus. Listen to these words that Paul wrote to the Corinthians, a sophisticated, proud church. Paul says, brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. 